I am really intrigued about this palette. I have a soft spot for Urban Decay. They were one of the very first eyeshadow palettes that I purchased when I got into makeup. Back in the day, Urban Decay was the coolest brand ever. I was so enamored by all of their products. But as you know, in the last few years, I've been completely uninterested in the brand. I picked up a couple palettes here and there, but I've skipped out on a ton. This is the first palette that I've seen that I was like, I really like the color story. So I'm excited to be reviewing the Wild Greens palette. I haven't watched any reviews or anything. But based on your guys' feedback, a lot of you are bored with this color story, not interested. I don't know, you guys. The color story really spoke to me. I like what it's given me, but I do agree with you guys. The packaging is kind of weird. We'll get <laughs> into that. But yeah, as you can tell, I will be reviewing this palette today. It's going to be a first impressions. I don't know about Urban Decay's eyeshadow formula lately, so should be interesting. Let's get into it. Right now, it looks like this is an Ulta Beauty exclusive, so you can only pick it up at Ulta and the Urban Decay website. Not available at anywhere else. I purchased this directly from the Urban Decay website. Honestly, it kind of took a hot minute to get to me, but it's fine, whatever. <laughs> I got it for 44 US dollars. This is featuring 12 wildly pigmented green and earthy neutrals made with a blendable vegan makeup formula. It's going to be vegan and cruelty free. Right. <laughs> so the box that it's going to come in is this one right here. Yeah, I think the packaging looks kind of childish on this. I'm not into it. I just know Urban Decay can do better. Here is the back of the box in case you need to know. It says it has a hit of avocado oil. <laughs> very, very interesting. Made in South Korea. Very cool. So here is going to be the packaging of the palette itself. And then the back of it right here, it shows you it's a vegan formula, 24 month shelf life made in South Korea, all of that good stuff here. Yeah, the package is kind of ugly. <laughs> I've decided it looks cheap to me, but when you open it, it's like this. That's kind of cute, right? And here is the palette itself. You guys, I totally am vibing with this color story, and I think it looks even prettier and more punchy in person. I'm looking at the photo online. It looks better in person. Now, the one thing that you guys did say that I do agree with you is depth. This needs more depth, right? Here's the deepest shade. Honestly, it's pretty deep, but yeah, I would agree some more variations in depth here would be better. Yeah, and then how it closes is just like this. Make sure, kind of push it in, make sure it's sealed nice and tight so that your palette's going to last longer. Because I guess if you don't close it all the way, it can get weird. So make sure you push it in. Make, make sure it's nice and tight. The component itself, I actually like. I like the style. I think it's a little bit different without being too out there. Just don't like the designs of this. But anyways, I wish it had more of like a jungle theme or something. This is what I think they should package it like. The Urban Decay Bamboo Palette. This came out like 10 years ago. I feel like they should pay ode to this era of packaging. Because how great would something kind of like this, inspired by this be so great for this particular palette. Maybe I'm living in the past, but I'm just saying. Let's get to swatching. By the way, I did review the KVD concealer yesterday. I'm wearing it again today. And it was hard for you to see because I had eyeshadow on, but this is what I mean right underneath my lash line. It really does emphasize these lines. It looks good everywhere else, but directly under my eye, I feel like it looks a little dry. So that's what I meant. Anyways, <laughs> so with the lights down, you can get a better look here at the palette. There are six mattes. This looks like a shimmer. These look more like metallics. And I guess this would be more so of a shimmer anyways. Six mattes, six shimmer slash metallics. Really great mix in here. So we'll start off with Chill, Lo-Fi, and Kickback. These are really great basic colors to have in a palette, by the way. So Chill is a frosty nude with microfine pearls. Lo-Fi is a soft matte pink mauve. It kind of blends right there in with my skin tone. And then we have Kickback which is a cool espresso brown matte. They feel quite soft. I like the way they feel. They feel like they'll blend easily. I'm gonna turn the lights out and draw a little more. Yeah, you can totally see that a lot better now. All right, let's see what fuzz, turmeric, and high vibe is all about. That's what they look like on my finger. Oh, I love fuzz. That looks really pretty. So fuzz is a shifty metallic orange. 
with orange, gold, and green pearls. So I can see that effect. I feel like there's a shade similar to this in the most recent palette that they came out with. High Vibe is a blood orange base with, no, JK. <laughs> Dermeric is a rich orange with red matte. And then High Vibe is a blood orange base with gold and orange pearls. So right here you can see the top row we have very warm tones. Let's get into the bottom row here, which are the greener tones. I like how they organize this. I think you have a very wearable warm top row and then you can get to the greens for something crazy or we'll see how crazy <laughs> but let's take Earthside super greens and prickly which I'm excited to play with so we have a cool light matte brown a soft mint green matte excited to play with that and then a minty green blue metallic base with light blue pearls looks pretty as you can see these are swatching softer they don't seem to lack in pigmentation but they do have a softer look and finish to them which is not a bad thing then let's get into twist kale <laughs> i actually really like the names of these and stash <sighs> twist I'm coming for you. This is a golden green shifty metallic with golden pearls. This looks like a little bit more of a topper. Then we have a olive green matte that's gonna be useful and a moss green base with micro pearls, gold micro pearls. So this is the palette right here. If you're more of a wearable makeup person, you're going to like this. I can tell you now, if you're looking for vibrancy, uh, you're not going to like this. This looks like a wearable green palette, if I'm being honest. I like it though. I like this color story. It is a little softer, but we'll see how performance is. So as with all of my eyeshadow palette reviews, I am going to do one eye and then I'll be back to do the other with you. I probably did a look that everybody and their mamas have done with this palette, but there was no way I was not going to play with the greens because if any colors weren't going to be good it was going to be the greens and I have to say guys I like this palette and I'm laughing because I have not liked Urban Decay eyeshadow palettes for years <laughs> and this is definitely the most successful one in my opinion um it's definitely not going to be for everybody the shadows are kind of loose and a little bit more powdery so you'll see I did get some fallout so act accordingly but I like this palette grabbing my refer brush and I'm using some of lo-fi just a little bit I'm just using this as our transition base right here I'll actually end up adding more transition colors in a few moments but I do like how this is more of like a peachy skin tone color right here which is going to be a good backbone especially if you're playing with the top row that has the more warm colors but you can see that doesn't add too much to my lid but I like that that's an option I'm gonna continue on with the same brush and we're gonna go into super greens right here so the problem that I find with shades like these is how easily they fade so I'm gonna be watching that throughout the day but I think I like it I didn't see it blending away too easily. I think this is a solid light green shadow because these can go wrong very, very easily. And just so you can get an idea of the kickback, it's a little... A touch powdery, nothing crazy. I honestly think it's powdery to a point where it makes it easier to blend, but not so powdery that it blends away. Look at me, Urban Decay is doing it right with this. That's pretty, you can see it's still vibrant on my skin tone. I'm gonna use a little bit of a smaller brush. This is a Rev for 15 and we're going into Kale. I don't know why, I just, I love this shade. I love that its name is Kale. I love that it's kind of like a pukey <laughs> greenish color. It's giving me really nice pigmentation. It's blending out nice kind of the center of the crease i'm gonna go back and build as well but we'll start off the base right there with a refer 14 brush we're going into stash now this is a metallic shade so this is kind of the one that made the mess on my face that this is what happens when you use a metallic shade it has the most depth and that is definitely what this palette is missing is a matte depth shade and I want something even deeper than this. Something that's like so dark green that it's almost black would be great in here or even a darker brown because this brown it's just not brown enough. I get you know some people won't use that darker shade for more wearable looks but I just feel like that's the missing piece to really create some cool looks. But anyways, not everybody wants that, so I get that. You can see this does still add some nice depth to this look. I'm not mad at it, but 
Like I said, if you use this metallic shade, it's going to get a little messy. It's not the easiest to blend out, but I'm not gonna knock it. It is a metallic shade. I knew that going in. It does kind of blend in seamlessly with the look. With a Refer 14 brush, we're going in with Kickback now. Like I said, I wish this was a little deeper, but I'm gonna use it to kind of mattify Stash a little bit. So Stash, I really wanted to add to the depth. And then I'm putting the matte shade Kickback on top to make it look as though I used a matte as well. Just like that. I'm going back into Kale here and let's blend these edges. So you can see a little bit of the powder flying out, but I'm not bothered by it. And then let's get back into Super Greens. See, this has a lot of intensity to it. While I have my brush in Super Greens, we're gonna start off with this on the lower lash line. I'm not doing anything really intricate with my lower lash line at all. I'm just building up all of the colors that I used. Next, we're going into Kale. Taking a smaller brush, I'm gonna get some of Stash. Just get that shade pretty close to the lash line, like so. And then again, I'm going to see if I can wipe away some of that. I don't love this shade, if I'm being honest. I think it's a necessary shade in this palette, but I wish it wasn't the formula that it was. It's not my favorite formula. Okay, now we're going into a chill right here. This is going to be that beautiful underbrow highlight. See, that just lifts the brow. And I'm also gonna pop that on the inner corner. I love that this is here. It's really creamy, gives a nice shine. I like it. Okay, let's get into the goods. I really wanted to play with the shimmers. I didn't get to use High Vibe on my eye, but I, I think the shade's going to be pretty underwhelming based on the swatch. It'll be soft on the eyelid, and I'm, I just wish that wasn't there. I wish it was more like these formulations. So I'm gonna start off with Twist right here. It's a little messy, so just be careful. That's why I'm tilting my head back to try and minimize fallout. I would suggest maybe use a glitter glue, something sticky. I think if you used a wet brush that would also amp these up, but I just want to show you them in their truest form. And they're very, very pretty. You can see they're softer. They don't have too much of a pigmented base, but I like it. I'm flipping my brush over and I'm going into prickly now, which has kind of like a minty tone to it. And I'm going to put this in the center of the lid and you can see how that's a little bit more minty. Yeah, I'm getting significant fallout from these shades. That's what I mean when I say, maybe wet the brush, do something to bind the eyeshadow to your eyelid, or do your face makeup last, because <laughs> this isn't good before I wipe it away. I wanna take a little bit of kickback and just kind of redefine this outer corner, get the excess glitter off of there. Should I use a little bit of fuzz? I haven't used it yet. Let's just get it on the corner of my brush. Wipe off excess, we'll put it right here. That's pretty, just for a little touch of it, because I haven't used it yet. I like that. Huge flaw to this palette, though. She's really, really, really messy. Oh my goodness, I don't normally get this much fallout from a palette. I don't like that. Oh, now I have glitter all over my eyes, and it's not very flattering. <gasps> I normally don't go in with my face makeup afterwards, but I think I might have to on this occasion because the, the root makeup is really ruined. <sighs> That's not good. Okay, let me redo my face makeup and <laughs> I'll be back to give you my final thoughts. All right, guys, so here is the final look. I mean, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous look. I'm not gonna lie. Um, Yeah, so overall, I'd probably rate this palette like a 7.5 out of 10. I really, really like this. I came in really loving the color story. I'm leaving loving the color story. If you are into like indie brands, really vibrant looks, anything like that, this is not going to be the palette for you. This one is definitely for the mass market. I think Urban Decay did a good job with this. The eyeshadows are a little bit messy. That's the biggest con. Do your eye makeup first. I did not like that aspect at all. That actually is a very big turnoff for me personally because I do my face makeup first. But other than that, I like it. I wish there was some more depth. I don't like this shade. This shade right here isn't going to give you much and everything's a bit on the powdery side. But generally speaking, I think the quality is really good. I think it's easy for beginners to work with. Very, very easy to blend. The shimmers are really beautiful. It's soft enough for those of you who only really like neutral tones. I think it's work appropriate while still allowing you to be able to play a little bit to get more of a vibrant green look like this. I like it. I think this is definitely my favorite Urban Decay palette that has come out in a long time. So if you, this is a color story that you're interested in, I hope that this review helped you out. I had a fun time with it. I'm excited to continue playing with this palette some more and I am going to leave that at that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Thank you so much for being subscribed to my channel and liking this video. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.